As we saw in the last video, the plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayer with lots of embedded proteins. Internally, the fluidity of the phospholipid bilayer allows chemical communication as vesicles pull away from one organelle and meld into other organelles. Membranes also separate outside from inside and determine what things move into and out of the cell. In this slide, we see an external object binding to a glycoprotein, a protein with a sugar stuck onto it, on the outside of a cell membrane. In this particular example, we see a virus, HIV, binding to the CD4 glycoprotein of human T cells. But it could be many different chemicals binding to their own specific glycoproteins. Notice in this picture that the CD4 glycoprotein is an integral protein, which means that it is embedded all the way through the membrane from outside to inside. But what happens when HIV binds to the CD4 protein? If you said that the CD4 protein changes shape, you're correct. And that change doesn't just affect the portion of the protein on the outside of the cell where the HIV virus binds, it changes the whole protein structure. And when the portion of the protein on the inside of the cell changes shape, that sets off a whole series of chemical reactions that changes the behavior of the cell. So the cell can respond to external stimuli even if those external stimuli don't enter the cells themselves. Well, some external chemicals do enter and leave the cell, though. And there are several mechanisms for this transport. One of them is simple diffusion. Simple diffusion is the spreading out of molecules from high concentration to low concentration. Small, uncharged molecules can diffuse through phospholipid bilayer as if the phospholipid bilayer wasn't even there. Examples of these small uncharged molecules are atmospheric oxygen, O2, and carbon dioxide, CO2. As molecules get larger and larger, there's less and less tendency to squeeze in between phospholipids and therefore lower and lower rates of diffusion across the membrane. And as molecules become more and more charged, ranging from having few partial charges to many full charges, those molecules tend to become more and more strongly attracted or repelled by the charges of the phosphate heads of the phospholipid bilayer. These charged molecules, therefore, do not readily cross the face of the phospholipid bilayer. Simple diffusion across membranes. The movement of small, uncharged molecules from high to low concentration across the membrane. Water is one of those small molecules that can diffuse across cellular membranes. Water does have partial charges from its polar OH bonds. But these charges are weak enough that some water can move directly through phospholipid bilayer. In addition, all cells have special proteins called aquaporins that allow the diffusion of water at high rates through the cell membrane. The diffusion of water across a semipermeable membrane is called osmosis. It's a diffusion process. This means that water will move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. The concentration of water on two sides of a cellular membrane is almost always determined by the concentration of dissolved substances. Remember, these are called solutes. A solution that has a high solute concentration, for example, really salty water, will have a lower water concentration. Conversely, a solution with a low solute concentration will have a high water concentration. Consider the picture. On the left side, we see a beaker of solution that's divided by a semi-permeable membrane. Water can move through the membrane, but the solutes, shown as the lavender balls, cannot. The solution on the left side of the semi-permeable membrane has a low solute, high water co composition. The solution on the right side of the membrane has a high solute, low water composition. In this situation, water will diffuse, or osmose, across the semipermeable membrane from high concentration on the left side of the membrane to low concentration on the right of the membrane. The picture on the right shows the, resu the results of this osmosis. With water osmosing to the right, the solution on the right side 
of the semipermeable membrane will actually rise to a higher level than the solution on the left side of the semipermeable membrane. This might be somewhat surprising. If water can move freely across the semipermeable membrane, why doesn't the solution just level out on the two sides? Well, it turns out that osmotic pressure is more powerful than gravity. The next two slides, on tonicity and turgor pressure, are associated with osmosis. I'll let you read about those topics in the textbook and apply them in the lab module. Large and or charged molecules cannot diffuse across the phospholipid bilayer. If a cell needs to move these types of molecules, it might use facilitated diffusion. The word facilitated means helped. In this process, a specialized membrane protein acts as a channel through which the molecule will move. Each channel protein is typically specialized to move a specific molecule. In other words, the channel proteins aren't just tubes that anything can flow through. Thus, facilitated diffusion involves help provided by a channel protein. It's still a diffusion process, so the molecules move through the channel from high concentration to low concentration. If a cell needs to move a molecule against the diffusion gradient from low to high concentration, or if a cell needs to move a molecule faster than the flux of diffusion, then a cell will have to spend energy, usually in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, to accomplish this movement. We call energy requiring molecular transport across a membrane active transport. This is something of a last resort for the cell. If a cell can move sufficient amounts of a molecule without spending additional ATPs, i.e. using a diffusion process, then I will typically opt to do this. All cells make use of simple diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, and active transport. Two other methods of molecular movement that are only found in eukaryotes, not prokaryotes, are endocytosis and exocytosis. In these processes, external objects, even large ob objects like bacteria, are brought into the cell, that's endocytosis, or excreted out of the cell, that's exocytosis, by way of vesicles. Membrane transport that produces se selective permeability, the main function of cell membranes. This selectivity is one of the basic processes of a cell. It plays a large role in determining how a cell will detect and respond to changes in its environment, and it plays a large role in determining how the molecules that move across membranes affect their environment. In the next set of videos for Chapter 4, we'll focus on energy metabolism. We'll see one example of how membrane transport is used by cells in the conversion from one form of energy to another, ultimately to the production of ATP.